This is the Xperia 10, the successor to the XA2 and the little brother to the Xperia 1. Has Sony Mobile made the right choices with this one, or are they pushing out a product simply to please shareholders? Hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas, and this is my review of the Sony Xperia 10. Sony's marketing this thing as a baby version of the Xperia 1, and that shows in almost every way. Plastic is the main material making up the chassis, despite its nice weighty feel in the hand. It's certainly not going to win the world's best made phone award, but similarly it's not going to make the world's worst either. It's quite boring as are most Sony smartphones, at least on the back, and whether you like that or not is neither here or there really. I happen to really like the plastic build here, similar to the one used in the Poco Phone F1 and slightly less similarly the one used in the Pixel 3a. Buttons are probably the worst that I've ever come across in a smartphone. They're mushy with little to no profile at all, making them very hard to press. On the flip side, or actually the same side, is the excellent fingerprint scanner. It's not that quick, but it's accurate and very well placed, with the ability to let you tap to wake instead of pressing a button to wake. Functionally, we've got some nice IO options, USB 2.0 in the Type-C flavor, a 3.5mm audio port, and microSD expansion under the flap. Something that seems very strange considering the lack of an IP rating. A controversial move that Sony made here is omitting the two-stage shutter button like we've seen on previous Sony Xperia flagships. That's something that I really like to see here, and they even happen to be on the mid-range phones, but not this one this time around. The Xperia 10's design is one that I appreciate for its minimal but executive looking grey and silver backing, ergonomically rounded vertices, centre topped placed camera bump and of course that wonderful front panel. We'll get to that display in a second but the one thing I really like about this is the layout of those bezels. I don't care that it doesn't have the skinniest bezels in the world, I just like the uniformity and consistency here. The lack of a punch hole or notch is refreshing as always, and I love how subtly rounded these corners are. It's uniform and exact, and I love it. The display is probably the unique selling point of the Xperia 10. Its 6 inch wide full HD IPS display wouldn't be out of the ordinary if it wasn't for that unorthodox aspect ratio, 21 by 9. The same aspect ratio as my video production monitor, and the format that the great Alex Langley produces in. I don't know if it works amazingly well in a smartphone, and I think we're kind of pushing our luck a bit with 19.5x9, let alone 21x9, but it does include its benefits, including watching movies on your smartphone. It fills the phone and feels like you're peering through a window into another dimension. Will there be a massive crop of data when zooming into a 16x9 video? You bet. But there's something extra special and kind of magic about this wide and wonderful display that I can't quite put my finger on. The panel gets super bright and since it's an IPS, viewing angles are great. Contrast and colour could be better and since it's not an OLED, immersion isn't perfect but I certainly feel like the aspect ratio more than makes up for this. It's sharp, responsive and more games are adapted to it than you might think. I've been playing Project Off-Road a lot on this device and it seemed to work very well with the ultra wide screen. Oh and one more thing, this thing gets really bright outdoors. I don't know if there are other IPS displays that are brighter than this one, but this one feels very, very bright. And in this weird heatwave summer that we have in the UK, it's really nice to see, literally. I guess this brings me nicely onto the performance. This is an area in which the 10 seems to struggle a little bit. With a Snapdragon 630 and 3GB of RAM, it's not exactly a powerhouse, and the rest of the spec sheet isn't looking so hot either. Some games ran quite well, like Project Off-Road, and some ran like crap, honestly. I know performance isn't exactly what the Xperia 10 is known for, but it is worth pointing out if you want to play games and other multimedia on this smartphone because it's using that nice wide display. Connection quality is decent as we can see by speed test, but unfortunately I wasn't able to test the cellular capabilities of the device due to this one not having a very good SIM slot. And that's just because I got it cheap off eBay. Day-to-day -day tasks seem to run just fine, although there were more hiccups than I'd have liked to have seen in a phone of this price. The gestures built into this version of Android are really, really annoying, and I'd rather have seen an option for nav buttons here, the typical three we usually see at the bottom, but I won't knock Sony for that, because it's kind of Google's problem. The software itself doesn't hinder performance or doesn't seem to in any way, and there are a few blow taps, but it's nothing like we've seen from Sony software in the past. I don't really care for Sony software support on mid-ranges like this one. If its track record is anything to go by, it's not going to get a lot of updates going into the future, even though Android 9 resides on this right now. There's no telling whether the Japanese multimedia giant will release updates 
to this in a timely manner, so we'll just have to wait and see. Moving swiftly onto the battery life, the sub 3000 milliamp hour cell in this unit is plenty too small and should have been at least 3300 in the first place. For all but the lightest of users, a full day isn't doable, but we do have Quick Charge 3.0 for a fast top up at lunchtime, which is something that most users will have to use. The camera experience on this phone has to be one of the worst for the money that I've really ever seen. Seriously, I ran some tests compared to the Pocophone and the Pixel 3a, and my gosh, did they make this thing look like a potato. Poor dynamic range, focus hunting, shutter delay, and the camera app were all areas that I found the experience tend to be very poor. I'm not saying that this phone is the worst in the camera department, but it certainly as hell isn't good. The selfie camera, by contrast, seemed to be fairly good if you're into that. I'll leave some more examples here, but I wouldn't waste your money if you're looking for a proper Sony Cybershot shooter. Pricing is really strange because this thing comes in at around £300 new and that puts it in a very awkward category because it's not a budget smartphone but it's not really a flagship killer. So what do we do with this information? Well if you're looking for a unique layout and a unique screen then this is great but it lacks a really good camera, it lacks good performance and good battery life at the same time so there's not really much going for it. It's in the same kind of price range as a used OnePlus 6, Pocophone F1, or Mi A2 Lite, which you can get for a lot less money. I'm personally under the impression that Sony made this smartphone for the 1%. And no, not the 1% who have loads and loads of money. The 1% who are really into Sony smartphones, into Sony innovation, and want a smartphone that, whilst isn't really expensive, isn't cheap, and doesn't really have a purpose in the market. Someone who's a bit of a Sony fanboy. I happen to really like the phone because I like to see different options and different form factors in the market. The slimness of the display and the tallness of it means it's really easy to hold, and whilst the camera isn't amazing, that display for me makes up for it, but then the performance and the battery life seem to deteriorate, and I don't know, it's really difficult to recommend. If you're looking for a smartphone and you don't necessarily care about the form factor, then go for something else. But if, like me, you're kind of interested in a 21x9 smartphone, maybe this is for you. Although, I recently got to check out the Moto One Vision, and that thing seems to be a much better smartphone with a 21x9 display. With that, it's probably time for me to go. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'm glad to be on the review train on this channel once again. So please do check out all the links in the video description to my social media and where you can buy this smartphone, because for those of you who like it, it's a pretty cool phone. But yeah, just wouldn't recommend for everyone. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna kind of head off now. So thank you so much to my patrons for your amazing continued support. Please do like, dislike, comment, and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.